What's going on, guys? New video coming to you here. 10 things that I've learned in my 18 years of doing martial arts, part one. So today we're going to be talking about the first and what I really think is the most important thing to remember in strategy at all freaking times, at all times, is never underestimate your opponent. Never, never for one freaking second underestimate your opponent. This is so important. Now, I have seen... Time and time and time again. I have been smashed up by too many nerdy, weaker-looking dudes who come into jujitsu or Muay Thai or boxing or whatever, and you start sparring with them only to figure out that, like, it's no gi <laughs> and they're a brown belt, but they just look like a freaking nerd. You know, a lot of nerdy dudes do jujitsu. It, like, lends itself well to an intelligent mind. It's like human chess. So you never know who you're dealing with. Um, there are several guys that I can think of off the bat that you would never fucking guess in a million years that they would wrap you up like a pretzel and choke you to death, like easily, easily. And so these are the type of dudes I'm talking about. You know, even like Glass is wearing like small, very skinny dudes, no muscle mass to speak of, who are just fucking good at choking people. They're just good at jujitsu. They're always like a step ahead of you because they're smart and they think through it. And like, this is what they go home at night. And think about is like it bothers them when they lose. So they think strategically about it, like for the 24 hours in between classes. And then they come back and they've got everything calculated out precisely. And this is one of the good things about, you know, jujitsu, at least, is that guys like that really tend to succeed because, as I said, they're smart, they're strategically minded, and they're viewing it as a game of chess. Now, even in Muay Thai, you know, you see some guys and they don't really look athletic. I've seen guys who are bigger and fatter. They don't look athletic. I've seen guys who are small and weak with no muscle mass. They don't look athletic. But you get in and boom, you get caught with a head kick to the side of the face real quick because they've been doing it for a long time. And maybe they got a dad bod. Maybe they got bigger than a dad bod. Maybe they are a nerd. But Muay Thai is like what like floats their boat. They're, you know, they're like you and I. They love martial arts. And you never really can tell who is a martial artist. It's one thing I've learned, you know, even guys I've seen around and met a lot of these guys trade with them who are special forces bros or different secret squirrel types. You wouldn't ever really guess. You would never guess that they killed like six dudes and they've been to Afghanistan like 40 fucking million times. But that's, again, it goes back to never underestimate your opponent. And it's so crucial here, you know, you look foolish, all right? You look foolish when you underestimate somebody. I can't tell you the amount of time before I really like learned this lesson that a brand new white belt would walk in and um, I'd get paired up with him and I'd be talking to him and I'd like, I'd be like, all right, well, I see the guy has no stripes on his belt. He doesn't really like know how to tie his belt. He's, you know, just seems a little bit confused. And I'd be like, all right, man, like this is how you do a Kimura. Okay, like good job, way to go. And he'd never say anything the whole time. And then when it's time to spar, we'd slap and bump, and it would be like, whoop, double power fucking slam on the mat. Whoop, he's inside control. What the fuck happened? Oh, well, he's a collegiate wrestler. <laughs> well, I failed to ask him that, or, you know, I failed to pick up on that. As I progressed in my jiu-jitsu career, I've become a lot better at, like, picking, picking wrestlers out, you know? I mean, besides just the obvious cauliflower ear or athletic build, You'd be surprised. You'd be very surprised, you know, who's wrestled, even just in high school, who was a decent wrestler going up against a jujitsu guy. Sometimes it just ain't fair, but you get yourself into an embarrassing situation by not kind of like figuring that out. Or even if you don't figure it out, even going against a brand new white belt, you should never underestimate these guys because all it takes is for them to get lucky once, you know? I mean, even someone who's never wrestled even rolling with somebody and you decide, ah, it's going to be an easy roll. I'll chill out. You know, I'll just, I'll go light with them. And the next thing you know, they're spazzing out all over the place with retard strength. And they're like bashing your head into the ground because they don't know any better. And that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous opponent because they're so like hopped up on adrenaline. They're so freaked out. They're just, they're in kill mode. And you're sitting there thinking, ah, oh, it's easy roll. If the guy gets too out of hand, I'll choke him. No, like you can't go in ever to a fight thinking like that because 
you're going to be too lax and it's going to get you fucked up. So now we translate this onto the street. And if you're sitting there thinking this guy's talking trash or whatever, for whatever reason, you have to engage this opponent. If you go in there with any other mentality besides I'm going to fucking kill him, you're in for a world of trouble. Because like I said, all it takes for them to get lucky and connect once with that right punch. All it takes is them to, they saw the, you know, the blast double on UFC and they're going to fucking try it on you. And you're not prepared for that. You get blast doubled on the cement, right? Not cool. So I think the biggest really takeaway that I could ever give anybody, you know, whether you are um, an accomplished martial artist or whether you're just a guy who's interested in self-defense is never, ever underestimate your opponent. Again, another example is Muay Thai, right? Somebody who can't fucking throw a kick to save their life. They look goofy. They're doing kicks like this, right? They're, they're just, they, they're throwing punches like this. And um, you go and you spar with them and you're like, all right, like, all right, whatever. Let me, this is going to be easy. And then boom, they get you right in the nose. <laughs> and again, it's even more dangerous sometimes because they don't really know how to go light. And they, get, they, they fucking, they break your nose, they sweep you down. And it's like, it, you know, bad shit can happen when you underestimate your opponent. I would rather overkill than underkill any day of the week. Go into every role, go into every sparring match, go into every encounter as if that guy is highly trained, as highly trained as you, or even better, more highly trained than you. And if you if you happen to run through him in five seconds, well, good for you, honestly. And he'll learn, right? At least for the first couple of sparring matches, right? At least for the first role with that new white belt. At least for the first sparring match with that guy who's only done Muay Thai for, you know, four to six months. At least for the first couple of rounds or the first round before you get cocky, feel him out. Get a hang of it. If it's a street fight, just fucking run through him. Don't have any mercy. I mean, it sounds fucked up, right? But like, honestly, it's the way we have to do it. It's the way we have to think about it. If you were if you were on the battlefield and you ran across a Chinese soldier, <laughs> let's just say it like this, and you ran across a Chinese soldier and you both had bayonets, would you give him any mercy because you think he was a little less trained than you? No. You'd be stupid to do so. You fucking stick him and you'd stick him again and you'd stick him again and then you'd fucking rush for it. That's the same mentality that we have to have in any type of street altercation. It's kill and, and go through and keep killing, you know? And I, again, this is <laughs> disclaimer, okay? I don't endorse any type of uh, behavior like that. Like, so your local law is always act within the law. Don't ever break the law and say that I fucking told you to do it. Like, just like, I don't, you know, this is for educational and entertainment purposes only, but that's the mentality that we have to have is you need to always treat any opponent that you come across as if they're as highly trained as you or more highly trained. And that way you'll be able to avoid any type of embarrassing situation or any type of life threatening situation that honestly easily could have been avoided in the first place. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I'm going to be doing 10 videos on this subject. The next video is going to be about something that I think you're all going to really like. So stand by. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do so. Hit that thumbs up down below. I know I don't do this channel a lot right now because I think a few of you know I'm training really hard to get an MMA fight, test all the skills that I've been acquiring over 18 years against another highly trained opponent. And uh, you know, hopefully by the time I get my purple belt, I'll be ready to do that. So it's taking up a lot of my time. I'm in the gym about two to three hours per day, five days a week right now. And then the weekends I party. So that's why I haven't been doing the channel a lot. But if you want really solid street fighting, easy to remember, easy to use instructional videos, check out gutterfightingsecrets.com. Okay, we've got direct download videos available there on gutter fighting, old school Fairburn method. We've got grappling videos. We've got knife defense videos. We've got knife offense videos. we got empty hands videos. We've got it all. And that's a really good jumping off point and foundation for anybody who's interested in gutter fighting and actually learning how to dominate an opponent on the street or in the battlefield. Listen, guys, it's been a pleasure as always. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, motherflowers.